Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotional. I'm going to spend a few days in this book right here, Questions of Truth, 51 Responses to Questions About God, Science, and Belief. I hope you have had a cup of coffee. I want to talk about the existence of God as uh, John Polkinghorne, um, a man who was a scientist most of his life, quantum physicist, uh, leading leading in his field uh, in all of the world, actually. And later in life, uh, back in 1979, he actually uh, dropped out of the scientific world and entered into the theological world to study to become an Anglican priest over in England there. Had a great privilege of meeting this man and uh, uh, over at Belmont University several years ago and uh, just fascinated listening to him talk, and I think you'll really enjoy some of these thoughts here. The, on the existence of God, he presents some questions and then gives us uh, his response to those questions. Do you believe, the question he's often asked, do you believe that God has made the evidence for his existence self-evident? If God is self-evident, what do you think about, uh, what do you think are the most compelling self-evident arguments for his existence? Great question. I know a lot of people uh, take philosophy 101 in college and are asked if there is such a thing as a God and uh, he's all powerful and he's good. Why doesn't he do something about the problem of evil? You know, that those sorts of questions enter into uh, sometimes into our educational system. And they're good questions. They're great questions to ask. So here he responds to this question on the existence of God and whether it's self-evident. He says, the creator has not filled creation with items stamped made by God. God's existence is not self-evident in some totally unambiguous and undeniable way. The presence of God is veiled because when you think about it, the naked presence of divinity might overwhelm finite creatures, depriving them of the possibility of truly being themselves and freely accepting God. That's interesting because there's a bit of science and theology and philosophy all mixed up into his thought there, isn't there? A recurring theme in this book is that out of love, God has self-limited the exercise of divine power to give creatures the space to be themselves. And as we shall discuss when, he, when we come later to evolution, uh, even to, quote, make themselves, end quote. This does not mean that there are no signs of the will of the Creator or motivations to believe in God's existence, but that we have to look a little below the surface of things to find them. Interestingly enough, science is some real help to us here. While science is competent to answer its own questions, questions arise from our experience of doing science whose, answer, whose answering take us beyond its narrow confines. One of these is very simple, but well worth thinking about. Why is science possible at all? So I love it that Polkinghorne has sort of turn things around, hasn't he, to the person who's asking, um, is, is the evidence for God's existence self-evident? He's now saying, why should science be possible at all? That's great. Of course, we have to be able to understand the everyday world in order to survive in it. But why are we able also to understand this subatomic quantum world and the vast universe of cosmic curved space-time? This is... You, Get another cup of coffee. Hang in there. Okay, it's worth it. All right, good. These domains are far from having direct impacts um, on our daily lives, and their understanding is called for ways of thinking that are quite different from our normal habits. And then in parentheses, he puts, in the cloudy quantum world, if you know where something is, you can't know what it is doing. And if you know what it is doing, you can't know where it is. We cannot picture such a world, but it turns out that we can understand it to a large extent. Close parentheses. Okay, did that fry your brain? It's awesome. Now, I don't, and that's awesome. Why? Because I think it's evidence of the existence of a mind, a designer. Yeah, that's why. Not only is the universe rationally transparent to science, but it also turns out to be rationally beautiful. Hmm. Fundamental physics is always expressed in terms of what mathematicians recognize to be, quote, beautiful equations, end quote. I love this. Yeah. A frequent and rewarding scientific experience is that of wonder. 
at the beautiful patterns of order revealed to our inquiry. Science does not explain these marvelous facts. It is simply happy to exploit the opportunities that they offer. Yet the rational transparency and beauty of the universe are surely too remarkable to be treated as just happy accidents. Belief in God can make all this intelligible, for it sees the deep order of the world, a world shot through with signs of mind, one might say, as being revealed in this way. Science is then understood to be possible because the universe is a creation and we are creatures made in the image of the creator. There's so much more here. I don't have time for a whole lot of uh, a whole lot more today, but I just really uh, love the way Polkinghorne thinks. I believe his website is called Questions. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick before I let you go. But it Questions on Truth, if I'm not mistaken, Questions of Truth. Dot org. Uh, if not, just uh, you can see the spelling of his last name there. Just do a little search for John Polkinghorne and you'll get a lot of these same questions. You'll be able to find his responses to them. Fascinating mind that he has and it's fascinating the mind that you have. And the mind that you have itself is evidence of a much greater mind who put all of this together and gave us the opportunity to even be aware of this. I don't think cockroaches are running around asking the question, why, where did all this come from? They're just kind of being, but man, God has given us a gift when he gave us a mind and a heart uh, to both seek him and seek to understand him. And at the same time to experience a relationship with him through faith in Christ Jesus, who makes this all possible. Wow. All right, so much more. I'll spend a couple more days in this this week, and uh, I hope this will be inspiring to you. Let me close in prayer. Lord, thank you. You Not only did you make our minds, but you blow our minds, and we're grateful for that. Um, the experience of, of, of knowing you, Lord, is so rich for us. Um, so uh, not only satisfying, but at the same time creates more longing because we want to know you more. So do that for each and every one of us, Lord. Stir up our uh, curiosity about you as we look at the world and as we look at ourselves looking at the world. Uh, may it lead us to you, uh, our creator, our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Have a great one. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas, music by Phil Kagey.